watching AYV Television. Thirsty, me blood dry, I thirsty. Sierra, Sierra, we they happy with the ginger. Sierra has a natural new flavor, and it's called ginger juice. It's so amazing, so refreshing. Sierra has a natural new flavor, and it's called ginger juice. Gonna give you stamina. Juice. We got the juice. Tell me who got the juice. Sierra got the juice. Hey, who got the juice? Hey, we got the juice. Tell me who got the juice. Sierra got the juice. That ginger, that ginger juice, that ginger. Give me that ginger juice, that ginger. That ginger juice, that ginger. I wanna be in the mood. Thirsty, thirsty. We could die out yeah. thirsty. Sierra, where they happy with the ginger? Sierra juice. The taste of Salon. Today is Monday, the 14th of September 2020. Good morning and welcome to Front Page on AYV Television on Channel 33 and also online at www.ayvnews.com and on Facebook, um, Africa Young Voices Media Empire on Radio FM 101.6. My name is Bokari Matia. Front Page comes up at 11 a.m. from Monday to Friday. And in this program, we review and analyze stories, findings, and events from the front pages from our local tabloids. But be in mind there that the views of our panelists are not the views of AYV. And to start off with the show, as always, let's start with the Africa Young Voices Media newspaper, which you can get for just 2,000 yuans. And on the front page, I state students in China elect Alpha um, Monarchy Conte and two popular journalists. Man jail 14 years for raping suckling mother. VP Judas screams three ministers. And amputee footballers cultivate 27 acres um, farm. And youth engage APC leader on peace in Makeni. Those are the headlines on the front page of the AYV newspaper. Over to the Kenya News on the front page, I said, Sierra Leone Civil Aviation Authority cautions um, intending travelers. Why Sierra Leone needs to focus on cardiovascular health. Criminal sessions. High Court has 43 cases in Pujangu. And then um, way out to release movie titled Ghost Killer. Sierra Leonean technologist develops app to help fight COVID-19. ACC collaborates with civil society activists and senatorial aspirants want Liberia and Sierra Leone to unite for Taylor's release. All this and more you can find on the front page of the Premier News newspaper. Away from the Premier News is uh, the Independent Observer newspaper. And on the front page, it states NCD engages carrying a district to enhance democratic good governance for attempting to kill Lima, three cents to High Court. Trade Ministry to roll out national microcredit for small businesses. Those are the headlines on the front page um, of the Independent Observer newspaper. Over to the AUCO on the front page, I state APC clocks 60 years. And um, over 14 Air Morocco passengers stranded. Woman gives birth to quadruplets in Alakalia town. Honorable Gevao briefs ACC on corruption allegations. An armed robber, Antiquities car extradi extradited, Salon Navy challenged in protected our waters. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Aoko newspaper. Over to the Concord Times on the front page, I state 20,000 kids live on the streets in Sierra Leone. That's according to the gender minister, and she was telling parliament. Um, also, the true story about Salkab and over 6 million United States dollars spent on COVID 19 fight according to um, the Center for Accountability and Rule of Law, as they reveal there. All this and more you can find on the front page of the Concord Times newspaper. Over to the political, on the front page, I state, um, expanded search for COVID-19 cases. Shout out to of Major Dr. Um, Philip Gevao, manager of um, search project NACOVAC. And um, West Africa and re-elect J.J. Safar. Face mask apathy hinders corona fight, according to report, and family suspects foul play in policeman's drowning. All this and more you can find on the front page of the political newspaper. 
Over to the satellite on the front page, I said junior officers breathe a sigh of relief as um, prison director sent on leave to retirement. Youth ministry hands over um, compressor machine to stand 17 car wash st center. Fisheries transformation, Emakowajalo hits the ground running. Those are the headlines on the front page of the satellite newspaper. Over to the momentum on the front page, I state 31 overpaid at finance ministry and over unpaid liabilities, China King Ho operations banned. Sierra Leone Civil Aviation Authority warns Sierra Leonean. So all this and more you can find on the front page of the Momentum newspaper. Over to the health newspaper on the front page, I state healthcare workers trained in digital technology. CMO urges health um, care workers for commitment. Citizens defy hands of our girls. Don't stigmatize COVID-19 victims. We supply medical items on requests, according to Dr. Lawrence and B. Revamping the country's health sector and 265 murder deaths in 2019, according to Professor who speaks um, good for dead destitute. All this and more you can find on the front page of the health newspaper. Over to the Standard Times on the front page, I said attempted murder, three accused to high court. Corruption stinks, Honorable Tawa resigns in parliament. And Puja on criminal session, sexual offenses top the list. All this and more you can find on the front page um, of the Standard Times. And uh, I think that seems to be the case right, right across the board with regards to um, the um, high court sessions that have been opened so far in most of these areas. But over to the awareness times on the front page, I state some um, quoting from President Joseph Saidu Momoa's 1991 Democratic Constitution of Sierra Leone, SLPP's Lima, says no coup or overthrow. Councillor Zakari Akane praises British people during inspection of water supply construction in Ward 395, Ward C. APC's NAC writes to Chief Sam Sumana on reinstatement. NRM states position and students in China elect Alpha Monarchy Conte as president with two young journalists in executive. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Awareness Times newspaper. Over to the Beyond Borders on the front page, I state um, no values at all. Public officials see nothing wrong in stealing. That's according to... Um, Civil society activist, um, executive director for the Center of Accountability and Rule of Law, Ibrahim Tommy, and um, deputy minister's case committed to High Court. You have the photo there of Lai Lawrence Lima, sexual penetration allegation, man arrested for raping teenage boy, and um, on other stories inside of um, this particular paper, you will find allowing pregnancy in school and our double standards. Um, do we have moral guarantors in Sierra Leone, head teachers in Cambia cry for um, subsidy? Um, all this and we can find on the front page of the Beyond Borders newspaper. Over to the News Watch. On the front page, I state um, Jala Professor exonerated by um, ACC. Lands Ministry defense actions before Parliament. And parents of victim testify at Kamarimba's trial. Driver arrested in a crash that killed Bishop. And you have the photo of the late Bishop um, Yambasu. NMA Director General highlights problems in mining governance. All this and more you can find on the front page of the Newswatch newspaper. Over to the Night Watch on the front page, I said Sal Cab Saga, the true story. And being safe and sound, President Bio extends stay in Lebanon. APC at 60. As criminal session ends in Port Loco, three sentenced to death by hanging and three sentenced to 35 years. All this and more you can find on the front page of the Night Watch newspaper. And over to the Calabash on the front page, I see it as unbundling of the institution takes center stage. The two story about Sal Kabi Magis, um, Prince Handling accused of unlawful dismissal. NPPA discloses public procurement manual. JJ Safari elected as chairman of um, WAMZ Congress Council. NRM declares commitment to democratize, um, democratize APC. Honorable Tawa Conte relinquishes committee, committee, committee chairman position. And as top 50 housemates to go through voting, 20 applicants with highest vote to enter um, the house. All this and more you can find on the front page 
of um, the Calabash newspaper. And lastly, before me is um, the Sierra update. And on the front page, I state 16 Fuller elders meet VP Jude Jalo. That's the big headline on the front page of um, the Sierra Update newspaper. But let me discuss this and more. I'm um, in the studio. I have here with me Alaji Saidu. Um, he's a Welcome to the program, Alaji. Yeah, good morning, viewers. Good morning, listeners. And I also have here with me <coughs> Mel Vintage and Mansari, um, one of our river journalists and also covering um, Parliament. You're welcome to the program, Melvin. It's always good. Good morning. And um, we, with, with, with that, let's start over with um, what has been happening so far with regards to um, Parliament, Melvin. And of mm -hmm. course, um, most of the papers make mention of um, saying that the true story about Sal Kabi Majis, and this is coming at the backdrop of um, Honorable um, Ibrahim Tawa Conte um, resigning his position as um, chairman of the Transparency Committee in Parliament and on grounds that um, they're not giving him uh, the space to do um, his, his work. What, what, what's your take on what has been happening so far in Parliament? Well, I, I would like to say it has been really one of. <laughs> I wrote a piece wherein I said in my roundup that the last, the opening weeks of September uh, have been marvelous and scandalous for the Sierra Leone Parliament. Let me begin on the marvelous side of things. It's rare and it's very unprecedented for Parliament to have ordered the police to escort officials of the Central Bank for failing to honor an invitation being put to them by the Transparency and Accountability Committee. And that happened indeed, wherein we saw the bank governor rush into Parliament to answer to questions around monies being given for as a support to businesses, dollar, the, the, the auction of the, the, the dollar, among several other things, for which he could not provide information. For me, I think that is marvelous on the side of Parliament. It was also marvelous for us to have seen Parliament intervening rigorously in probing into the financial capability of China King Ho, wherein we saw for the first time in a rare event again, Parliament stepping its feet hard to say there are needs for clarity on their operation and their, finan and their finances. That was marvelous. It was also marvelous the last two weeks for Parliament to have dragged the Minister of Lands housing and country planning, though it was in a closed-door session. But we should not lose sight of the fact that there were there we um, social media reports saying that, oh, the Attorney General and blah, 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 and blah. I don't want to go into that. But finally, the leadership of the House dragged Dr. Dennis Sandy to explain issues around complaints about land. Also, again, it was marvelous to have seen Parliament mending fences with Dr. James Vimy. History will have its right that Dr. James Vibi is one of the executive officials in this administration who, ch who first challenged Parliament, saying that the Honorable Veronica Cadiz's say should be called to order. And finally, last week, that beef has finally been rested. So that's the marvelous aspect of Parliament. But also, it was scandalous for a Parliament to have been dubbed the, well, fourth most corrupt institution and parliamentarians the second most corrupt individuals. Very scandalous indeed. Although that report, I've always stated my reservations around the report for obvious reasons. But that is an issue for another day. It was also scandalous for this parliament, current parliament, to have seen very rare incidents in which the chairman of the Transparency and Accountability Committee, who is also a member of this government, he represents the Sierra Leone People's Party, backing out of the committee saying that he has not been given a free hand. That was very, very scandalous. And also we had other members saying that they are also relinquishing their positions in the committee. Although I have been reliably informed that the deputy chairman of the Transparency Committee is not part of that decision at all. Meaning, not all the members of the Transparency Committee have resigned. But we'll come to that, clar that clarity on. But also I think it was controversial. I will not say scandalous or marvelous, but controversial. For Parliament to have squeezed to the feet the Minister of Information and Communication over what he submitted as cabinet paper and conclusion versus what the President said. For me, I think this shows that our democracy is working. This shows that we have a long way to go. And again, it was also controversial for us to have seen the ACC, someone in Honorable Indolo Moiro Gevao, for whatever reasons we don't too clearly know. 
But I think it should boil around what he told the BBC as per what the speaker said and what is happening. So for me, I think it has been a week or weeks of topsy-turvy in the House, but that is not uncommon. It shows that our democracy is working, and some of those issues, like the speaker said, they must take an introspective look at them and see how they can fix them. On that report, I'm not here to talk about that report, but I have several reservations. In fact, reading the reports more and more mm -hmm. opens Pandora's boxes. But I will just shelf that for now and say, our parliament for the last two weeks of September has been marvelous and scandalous. All right. Uh, 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 thank you very much. And uh, let me come over to Alaji with, with regards to what has been happening um, in parliament and, and the, the, the land um, minister of lands being called. Um, I think there was um, a warrant sent to someone from um, the Bank of Sierra Leone as well mm -hmm. to Two appear. Yeah, yeah to, to appear before parliament. And, and we also have. Um, the unbundling of um, the institution of Salcab mm. and and the accusations of parliamentarians being second most corrupt in parliament, the fourth corrupt institution in the country, and so on and, and so forth. And all this has come um, um, uh, uh, to the backdrop of um, Honorable Tower resigning as um, the chairman of the Transparency and Accountability Committee um, on grounds that they are not giving him the free will to do um, his job. What's your take on all the <coughs> developments so far in parliament? Well, to be very frank with you, Matthias, this is a clear indication that the CLO Parliament is at work. You see, what we have seen over the years, and then uh, if actually Parliament actually take its function, okay, definitely we do see there is no need for us to have something organ organization, such as the ACC and others, you understand, to checkmate some of the court practices. Because mind you, you realize that. Parliament, the highest decision making in terms of legislation in the country. They have two main functions one, to make law, and then to supervise parliamentary oversight committee on various government ministries, departments, and agencies. And definitely, if they are doing their work very effectively, they, alone, they also can contribute greatly to minimize or to put an end to practices in the country because they have the mandate, they have the constitutional mandate to summon. And that's why you can see the recent development in Parliament when they invited um, the bank governor, okay? Because of one reason or the other, maybe he wanted to um, judge the invitation and decided to send other people, you understand? But the, parli uh, the parliamentary committee was insisting that they want to see the uh, bank governor or else they can take another act. The constitution give them the mandate to summon and to arrest. So they have everything in their powers. And then... When they implement that, we see finally the bank governor, in spite of all other things, mm -hmm. has to appear before the court, contrary to what he said that he did not want to go. But because they have arrested two of their members, you understand? And you do not want to see these two members being detained or going down or either to uh, um, one of these police cells, you understand? Because it was only at the uh, um, parliamentary, uh, um, uh, one of the offices, they put them in that particular custody, waiting for the arrival of the bank. Uh, bank governor, and definitely the bank governor decided to come. This shows that the parliament is working. And secondly, we must allow parliamentarians to do their work very effectively because, mind you, they have taken an oath, okay, to defend their constituents, that's the people, and they have taken an oath, okay, and also to defend the constitution of Sierra Leone. And definitely we should allow them that they can do their work without any hindrances. You see, it's unfortunate, it's very unprecedented in the history of Sierra Leone Parliament um, to see a parliamentary oversight committee chairman in the person of the MP for constituency 132, which cover Lombly. Juba and Lombly and other areas, okay, in the person of Honorable Iban Tawa Conte of the ruling SLPP, resign. Although, um, he resigned because, according to, in my view, be, I believe that they did not give him the free hand for him to execute his function as the chairman of the Parliamentary Oversight Committee on Transparency and Accountability, you understand? So because of that, he decided to resign. And this is very serious because if parliamentarians have been taking the oath to defend this nation, to defend the people, and to see that government work, definitely we should encourage them and give them all what it takes to ensure that they do their work very effectively. You understand? 
And sadly enough, we heard about this whole issue with climate, all the situation that is happening in Parliament when you learned about um, this very um, uh, honorable Tawa to resign the issue of SALCAB. You see, it's a lot of issue pertaining to this SALCAB. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, I do want to deliberate on that. <laughs> why, you understand? Why, why are you guys I'm afraid coming. to go into no, the SALCAB issue? No. When, when, from the newspaper's point of view, we have two newspapers that are <laughs> Um, saying okay. that um, the true story about Salkab uh, has emerged. And from, yeah. from what I have here, or uh, from the Calabash, yeah. um, it is clear that there is a third party that's going to be involved in the unbundling, or wh on when Salkab would mm. have been unbundled, mm. on, on there will be a third party. Mm. But, but we'll come to that later. I just round up quickly, and, yes, and I'll ask Melvin on that. I do not want to go into the liberty <laughs> of the Salkab, you understand? <laughs> but in my own view, talking mm -hmm. about um, 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 the unbundling of Salkab, mm -hmm. look at it, it is very good, and the other way, it is not good. It is not good because we have seen in the past, this is not the first time we are privatizing government institutions and agency at the end of the day people can come and do all sorts of talking it's going to benefit the people but at the end of the day based upon our past experiences look at some other institutions that have been privatized in the past but we don't send a dividend from them they are still languishing mm -hmm. so that is why some people are still afraid you understand because they believe that salcap is doing very well you understand why at this point in time you understand is it because other particular individual on the background who has some basic interest which, which some of us did not know now they wanted to unbundle in this uh, very important institution. These are some of the issues we did not know, you understand. But as time goes on, as time unfolds, definitely. And unfortunately, or unfortunately, SALCAP is not only the institution uh, um, that will require unbundling. Um, the uh, Seattle as well mm. is also another institution that, that has been looked into. And uh, all that is coming from the Ministry of Information and Communication. But um, there is a comment here on Facebook. And... Um, mm, Many of our viewers, our regular viewers, are following us on Facebook and the likes of um, Ellie Stevens, Ronald Abubangura, and Eddie Grant are all following us. But um, two questions. Now, firstly, um, Eddie Grant is saying, um, um, sorry, Ronald Abubangura is asking, are those interviews during the survey mm. um, at the Well of Parliament um, ready to be brought forth for evidence before SEC? Mm. If yes, fine. But if no, Many will say again that the ACC is not doing their work. And Daniel Sope um, is asking, um, he, he's saying, good morning, um, AYV. Honorable Tawa resigned as chairman from his position because um, the ministry um, is not allowing him to do his job. Um, is that true or um, do they want to privatize SALCAB? And that's the issue. All right, let me speak to the broader issue mm -hmm. on bundling of SALCAB. I spend my weekend researching as to what obtains when, it, when we talk about the fiber optic management. Mind you, Sierra Leone is not the only country having this ACE cable. We're having Nigeria and other, several other countries. And I'll beg those that are saying SALCAP should not be on bundle because it's profitable. So please do their research well, including the, the erudite members of parliament. What obtains? You go to Nigeria, it is on bundle. You have a company that deals with the, the cable itself. You have another company that deals with the management and the administration of day-to-day -day operations. That's what, according to my little research, I have discovered. So yes, if we are told you look at international best practice with the fiber optic, Sierra Leone should not be an exception because that's what the World Bank, if you can recall, under the era of um, Minister Alpha Khan in the APC days, the World Bank and the government of Sierra Leone had an issue over that. And in recently... We need to talk to the World Bank and seek their clarification on this because I am made to learn from papers I have watched that it's the World Bank asking that this should be the case, that SALCAP should be unbundled, particularly with the fiber optic. So I think the question begs, what best serves the international and local interest here? And according to experts, it's only when you unbundle it. I know this is about economics. This is about money. This is about interest. SALCAB will not want to cede some of its authorities to, to be unbundled. On, on One, you're talking about the liability, talking about the profits and or no profits, and all of these things. So unbundling SALCAB now will mean, oh, some people, will, like I saw the other night, um, the chairman saying there will not be job cuts, which is good. But I mean to learn is this very chairman that is behind the scene using, I don't want to use all those other things that I have collected on this issue. 
because he's a very senior media colleague. Let's just share that for the IS, quote and unquote. But what I would say on this issue, what international best practice we should follow? I am not saying we should dance to the tune of World Bank, but if World Bank and the government of Sierra Leone are deeming it necessary that this is what obtains for SALCAP to be more profitable, more viable, and so on and so forth, why are so people scared? Is it because of private or personal interest? I'll share that for now and come to the question on, on interviews. Mm -hmm. Remember, I remember vividly on AYV on Sunday, at the end of that program, um, some of the civil society guys were like rushing at me when I tried to be very critical of that uh, perceptions survey. The reason I asked that question was this, and it's now coming to that. That is what this person is asking. If you are saying people said so and so and so as their perception, and now parliament is saying bring us the proof. Firstly, is Carlot under is, is Carlot duty bound to first furnish parliament with the questionnaire? How the people responded, and now that SEC has expressed interest, what if SEC asked Carl to help them with their investigation by providing the questionnaire, the people's, the respondents, and their, and, and their responses? All of that is what will make facts or fiction. So if that is not as certain as now, that's why I have always, and I will continue to always hold the view that that report should not be discarded, but also need to be dissected. Now the push is coming to the shove. We want to see. And I will give out to the BBC that, yes, he, 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 he attested to that. Now, Parliament is saying, all right, fine, it's your right. We have no problem with that. But just help us with the proof, and let's see how we can do our in-house cleaning. I think this is what we need. So I think now, the ball is in the court of Carl. If they know, which I am sure, I'm cock sure that the, indeed they should be a credible, that report should be a credible one, looking at the, the literature reviews they did. Although, again, I still have an issue with the literature, literature review. You cannot use an, a literature review conducted 10 years ago to still talk about corruption now. 10 years ago, we don't used to talk about technology, but now we have technology. So even those literature review, I'm not saying um, um, the Pundes and other, other literature review they did were not enough, but I think we should, we should have, I mean, upgraded some of the literature we use to guide that one. It, again, I'll keep on saying the report is something we all should embrace, but not shy away from critiquing, not criticizing, critiquing. Let's ask the critical question. For God's sake, this report said um, 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 MPs are the, 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 the second. second most corrupt and parliament is the fourth most. I don't know, what, 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 what's the distinction here? How, how the report went about distincting parliament from parliamentarians? I have gone through the report. I think Mr. Tommy is a fine, fine gentleman in this country. I have a great deal of respect. But I think they should explain the dichotomy. How did they distinguish parliament and parliamentarians in the first place? Again, this report is talking about transparency. But it's just only 18 different funded. How much was funded for this report? We don't know. But that is for their own internal affairs per se. But if we are talking about accountability and transparency, those are the hallmarks. You, you cannot say Melvin is unclean and you yourself cannot present things around financial accountability. So for me, that's one. But again, the long and short of it, somebody asked another third part of the question, whether Honorable Tawa, um, I mean, I spoke to the leader of government business and he clearly stated, he said, Melvin, we've been here in this parliament and we know that the executive is a separate arm of parliament. I will blast the minister here by saying he was disrespectful to parliament. I think he was misinformed or misguided that he feels that our oh, cabinet is powerful than parliament. No! No! All I will say, parliament could have done otherwise to save the government an embarrassment. This is a big embarrassment for the new direction government, a government that prides itself in saying that, oh, we don't have sacred cows, a government that says, oh, we are fighting the war on corruption, a government that says we are transparent. If you are transparent, I will want to sit here and boldly say the chief minister has not been doing his work. He has not been doing his work at all. If on one hand, cabinet is being informed that Salcab is making profit, and on the other hand, the minister is saying otherwise, whose duty is there to make sure that these reports are vetted, are checked, are verified, are corroborated? I think it should be the office of the chief minister. But we've seen a situation where cabinet is being presented with something that was not checked, and Mr. President and his speechwriters went ahead, went ahead, went ahead, and presented that for the president to present. That was misleading, if it's not the case. So for me, I think the chief minister must up his game. He has not been doing, he's not, he has not been helping. Thankfully, we are having a robust vice president who is now going about doing the role of the chief minister. That is what the chief minister should be doing. 
before the president delivers the state of the nation address, make sure that all these MDAs who have submitted reports to be included in, that, in, in, in those address, you vet them. Make sure that they are true. But now look at the kind of embarrassment and people want to say, oh, the, is this and that. For me, I am totally against what we saw unfold, unfolded that time or, or, or that particular day wherein you see somebody calling a minister arrogant, minister is calling me saying, I'm a big boy. That was an embarrassment. That could have been averted. I will not blame parliament for that. They were only doing their work. Had the executive been so serious, they could have averted that. Yes, the leadership could have intervened and asked for that meeting to, to have been, I mean, stood down or something else. But it seems as if the embarrassment is boldly coming, not from parliament. Parliament only did its job, but the executive. Because the chief minister is not at work. I will say it. The chief minister is not helping President Biro at all. It's good that we're having a vibrant vice president. If not, I wonder what could have happened in the absence, in the conspicuous these days, absence of our president. So for me, I think some people in the executive are not doing their work. And so parliament must do the work for them. All right, so let, let's look at the comments uh, in so far. Frontline East saying, and Salcab needs to be on bundle for effective operations. Um, not much has been done. And um, he goes further to say, ACC needs to investigate um, the Salcab um, issue. Ronald Abumagoa is saying, uh, then get our the cow and then hold the rope. Imagine a committee on transparency and accountability not giving the leverage to do their job. It speaks um, um, volume. And the other comments in um, so far, Alaji Amarakebe is saying, kudos to President Bio for lifting the ban on transparency. We now have all sectors opening up. Sierra Leone is on um, the right footing under the past regime. It will have not been um, possible. Um, agreeing with you, um, Ronald Abubuangu is saying, sure, the literature review should be within five year um, period. Good. Amara Alpha is saying, um, let the people join President Bio to fight um, against corruption collectively for the betterment of the country. And the decision making house has named, has been named as fourth most corrupt institution in Sierra Leone. It is a call um, for concern. And if Honorable Tawa has resigned as the chairman of um, the Transparency Committee, let him resign also from parliament <laughs> for disrespecting our leaders. I think those are comments <laughs> in so far. But quickly, uh, um, I'll add your response on, on, on all what Melvin has said and, and, and the comment before we go over to our next speaker. Yes, to be very frank with you, you know, um, when you talk about government, is coordination. Definitely, I believe if um, uh, the Minister of Information as well done is um is work very effectively mm -hmm. definitely we cannot see this type of embarrassment in the first place you understand especially in the issue of cabinet papers you see this is not the first time you understand we are having this type of problem your key there are times after you have make your submission somebody has to overlook it very mm -hmm. thoroughly you mm -hmm. understand and that is why you have the, the vice president or the chief minister to vet some of these cabinet reports before ever you take it to a parliament, you understand? Definitely, I'm sure if they have done that very effectively, definitely they should not have that embarrassment. And mind you, parliament has its own function. Mm -hmm. This is very, very important. It's a very separate arm of government. And definitely, as I said earlier, if they allow parliament to do their work very effectively, and mind you, most of the people that head in the, uh, the parliament as of now, as I speak, they are very credible people mm -hmm. who have served parliament before. This is not their first time. Looking at the speaker itself, Honorable Dr. Abbas Bundu, this is not the first time coming to parliament. He has been there for many years, you understand. And then the leader of the government business, okay, in the person of um, Honorable Numa, okay, from Kenema District, this is not the first time. So he knows much about parliamentary proceeding, okay. I think he also tried to abat some of this situation mm -hmm. because he's part of this government, you yeah. understand. But it also has its own function, you understand, as a member of parliament trying to do the right things. Then at the same time, how to save the government of the day, you see, is very, very important. But I think if they should have had earlier consultation, mm -hmm. definitely these, we cannot have this type of embarrassment because it's the government of the day and they're all members of the, 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 the same ruling party, you see. But having said that, I think we have the way forward to see how best we are going to resolve some of this issue to see that parliamentary work and the government business continue to go on. Because yeah. at the end of the day, they are there to serve the people of this nation. And besides, they have a president who has a vision to ensure that the title change the narrative 
contrary to what they meet when they inherit this new government, you understand? So these are the issues we believe that we we'll try to resolve those issues. Yet still, people can have such an idea behind the backs as far as this issue is concerned. Mm -hmm. But we must have to look at the bigger picture. And if we say that we are going to look at the bigger picture, we must have to look also at international best practices mm -hmm. on the issue of bonding. This is not mm -hmm. the first time, you understand? As I said earlier, you understand? It has its own advantage and disadvantage. But mind you, whenever we want to go about the issue, we must have to look the points and cons, and then look to other countries that have succeeded. As we have said, this is not the first time. And when you're talking about Salkabi, there are a lot of experts that has to handle that issue. Do we prepare? Do we have all these people that are going to handle this situation? No. And that is why people are helping us in terms of financial. The IMF, they said that we should bundle these things. And mind you, Salkabi is not the first country. Other countries have done that. Definitely, we don't want to be left behind. But let us all, all come together and see how best we are trying to resolve the issue, then we forge ahead. Can I just... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 I, I mean, for Onai Butawa, mm -hmm. I mean, the whole world know he is my close man. But I think he, he, he could have done something otherwise more, more procedural than human. Yes, we should have a nation that is run by procedures and processes, not emotions and sentiments. He could have done his resignation, although he's saying he, he feels compromised if he could have stayed on. But I mean, the constitution is clear as to how one resigns from being a member of parliament. And I was talking to some parliamentary experts who said, well, although the standing orders and the, standing and, and the constitution is not clear as to how you resign from a committee, but the lay down, the, the, the crux of the matter is, if you want to resign from parliament, you do a letter in your handwriting. So I think it should be guided there also. The constitution is clear. He could have done, he could have submitted his resignation in a meeting rather than public. But that's a question for another day. And another ministry that is not helping in a new direction at all, at all, I hope they are listening and paying keen attention, is that political affairs ministry. That ministry, in fact, it should be unbundled. Or, 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 or something should be done to that ministry. That ministry is useless. It hasn't got any use. If the political affairs ministry was useful, such an embarrassment could not have happened to the, to the, to the executive. Mm -hmm. They are not useful at all, at all. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. And President Bio and Vice President Julie, they should be looking at perhaps rolling heads in that ministry or perhaps just fold it up, not even unbundle it, because it's, it's having no purpose. Look at the political climate in Sierra Leone. Look at the situation among political parties against themselves and within themselves. What is the political affairs ministry doing? Nothing, nothing. But they are, pay, they, they are being paid for doing, for, for, for doing the work. For me, what I think is institutions must work. We need the rule of institutions, not the rule of men. And what we've been seeing so far, yes, some few men are showing extraordinary commitments, but that is not up. You cannot fight corruption individually. The fight against corruption, read the global reports on fighting corruption, it takes the institutional framework. That's a good thing. That's a good thing about that report. In some of the literature review, it was clearly stated that you cannot fight, you cannot fight um, corruption by having a GTC report or a CUI. No, those are just short-term interventions. You need a long-term one empowering the ACC. Again, on this report, I am not an opponent of the report so far, Mulem. But again, how can you say uh, parliamentarians are more corrupt than ministers? Putting ministers on. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll start, I'll beat my chest. Ministers, ministers, in my perception and opinion, are more corrupt than parliamentarians. Ask me why. Oh, they deal with a much more bigger budget. They can coerce their permanent secretaries. But it's not easy for a parliamentarian to coerce even a committee, committee, committee clerk. We've seen all of that. So for me, I think this report is not the focus here, but we need to do justice to the report as the report seeks to do justice in the fight against corruption. I've said it, I'll say it again. The biggest obstacle in the fight against corruption is politics, partisan politics. SLPP don't want their people to be embarrassed. We saw it with Sawa and Parliament. APC will never want their, their folks to be embarrassed until and unless we begin to see politics and uh, um, politics different. From corruption, corruption, even from politics, we will still be having this problem. So I think we should be having laws, rules, and regulations guiding the actions of politicians when it comes to the fight against corruption. If not, FBK is just wasting his time. All right. Uh, now, um, Ibrahim Bayema is saying, um, I don't even know um, what is the role of um, the chief minister. And um, Lamin uh, Denke is saying, ACC is selective in handling corrupt matters. And um, um, this was the reason... Um, we are doubting the legality of the ACC commissioner as a party card holder. Um, 
And th th there are so many comments coming in. I'm afraid I have to uh, uh, um, look through thoroughly um, through them. Um, Sir Philip Mani saying, when the government of the day is not responsible and not in the interest of the nation, this is the result. All um, the administration of President Bio um, is a mess and a disgrace to the people, both home um, and abroad. And um, also, Mohamed Jalloy is saying, I'm calling on all Sierra Leoneans to celebrate Honorable Tawa for being a patriotic Sierra Leonean. And um, I hope deep rooted politicians will not go after him. Keep it up, <laughs> Honorable Tawa. God is um, with you. Um, on, on the issue of um, um, Uda Big Passing Company, um, Ambassador Mike Joseph Kami <laughs> saying, the Minister of Information. Uh, the big boy issue. Yeah, the big boy issue. <laughs> the big boy uh, on, on, on <laughs> is, is a disgrace and, and, and an embarrassment to the president for someone calling himself big boy before MPs. It's really, it really says thanks. I really want to say thanks to Honorable Tawa for such um, um, stance. And um, um, Stefan Yala is saying, I totally agree with the young man. We need to have um, the evidence for the claims made so we can critique um, the report. Um, also, uh, there's so many comments um, coming in um, here. Ronald Abu Bangra is saying, biggest boy versus big boy in the house. <laughs> I think those are the comments in so far. But um, also, so another sensitive issue that has to do with um, sexual and gender-based violence. And of course, um, um, half of last week, I, I was around um, um, the provinces, um, Moyamba, um, Bont, and Kailau, and then um, high courts are, are opening. And the issue at hand is there are ca the cases that are um, in high amount of volume are sexual penetrated cases um, uh, since um, high court close operations and then um, the opening. But uh, one key concentration here is the sexual penetration, the alleged sexual penetration um, of a man um, on a teenage boy. On the, on the Beyond Borders newspaper, yeah, it says sexual penetration allegation, man arrested for raping teenage boy. Um, Alaji, yeah. mm -hmm. what should we do to tackle the issue of um, sexual penetration, gender-based violence, and, and so on and so forth, early marriage, te the teenage pregnancy? I think we, we've done enough in terms of raising awareness, in terms of um, people understanding the ills of um, um, these acts and how they, they will hinder our society. But yet, these acts are going um, on a better. What do we need to do um, as a country, as a nation? But because we, we've toughened the laws. We have a special court on, on sexual and gender-based violence. That is enough from the judicial point of view. There is the political will. Uh, and the police, to a very large extent, is doing a very great job, even though there are still gray areas um, with areas of um, how to prove if someone indeed committed these offenses on, on, on having um, a forensic lab and so on and so forth. But to a large extent, there has been cooperation from um, the executive arm of government and the judiciary on sexual gender-based violence. Um, but yeah, this is a very worrisome issue, especially... You, can have you have seen now the dimension is taken out. First of all, it's women, but now it's a boy, you understand. And besides, government, civil society, even the media, we have raised a lot of um, information arising as far as this issue is concerned. What are we going to do to put an end? But yet still, uh, the situation is still coming. Look at what has happened in the provinces during these special court cases, you understand, high court proceeding. Most of the cases there are also related on sexual gender-based violence and sexual penetration, etc., etc. But the situation that, you, the, the way and manner this trend is taking, definitely, I think we must have to sit again and try to understand what is the rationale behind all this. Because you cannot sit down a very reasonable man going to rape or try to penetrate young, ma uh, young ba babies below six months, some of, them, some of them are two years, five years, etc., etc. I think there are some other reason these people are involved in this act. Is it because people, quote-unquote, are alpha man, they tell them for good then kind here? <laughs> Definitely, we must have to look into this other area because I don't see any reason what is the odds for them, you understand? What are they going to benefit? But by and large, I think as a government, the government has done a very good job to see how best they are going to put this thing behind us, but yes, it's coming. 
The first lady has launched the answer of her girls, yet still people are still engaged. And now, man raping young boys. And then today I was amazed when I had over the morning coffee radio program that um, young boys Rape, raping an uh, yes, woman. an elderly woman <laughs> of the age of 50 years. You know, it's unprecedented. Why? Where are we heading for as a nation? This is very, very important. I think we should all come together as a nation. Let's all try to see what is the cause of this thing and see how best we are going to put behind us. But definitely, it is not good for our nation. Uh, now, now uh, uh, Melvin, on, on, on this backdrop, there is a paper here that says, according to um, the, the Minister of Gender and Children's Affairs, 20,000 20, kids um, are living in the streets of um, Sierra Leone. And I could remember, I think... Um, since 2007 or so, th th there has been so many um, interventions to make sure we have less um, street kids, as the case may be. Don Bosco from Bull is doing a very great job with regards and the girls. Um, and also, um, other orphanage homes are also doing the same. But 20,000, is that not alarming? Well, firstly, I should say kudos to the minister, Manti Tagawali. She was She never presented herself as the big girl in the house. She was very modest, very professional and pragmatic with parliament. And thus, this is what we say. Where, when, where there is nexus in governance, the issues come out. But where there is cover-up and insincerity, it ends in palaver. So for me, firstly, this revelation was made before the Gender and, so, and, and Children's and Gender Affairs Committee in parliament, wherein the minister did not only describe the situation as 20,000 kids in the streets, she also said that the orphanage policy in Sierra Leone is not working. And there is a need for research to come up with a model that fits Sierra Leone context. So you see, when, when someone knows a job, and she also went on to, to, to say the government is now having a, an entrepreneurship contest for women in entrepreneurship. However, she outlined it clearly, unequivocally to parliament that the availability of resources is a challenge. So what we are seeing here is, she also said, Children giving birth to children, meaning there is a need for a review on parenting policy. There is also a review, a need for review on the child rights policy. Because according to Manti, many children are having children. Many parents are abandoning their children also, reneging on their duties to take and look after their kids. All of these are issues we have to grapple with. We have to grapple with if we want to look at abuses on children and particularly girls. So for me. It seems as if the executive and the legislature are, are, are on clear parts on this one. That the issues are existing, how we fix it. One, we must have the resources. Two, we must do the law, the, the law reviews. Three, we must engage with stakeholders and communities. Again, they need, on the need of, for, for, for um, a law review. On the age of consent for marriage, one law is saying 18, another one is saying 16. So it was clearly stated by Honorable Tawa just the day after that, that, that drama and showdown with the... With the with the Minister of Information. He was there again, he's a member of that committee, and he said clearly that there is a need for the harmonization of these laws. So this is what we're talking about. Governance is at work. The issues are now bare. 20,000 kids, they can become anything, oh. Mm -hmm. 20,000 kids on the streets, some of them can be pickpocketers, some of them can be prostitutes, some of them can be thieves, others can be arm robbers. Few of them will emerge successful because how can you be on the streets and end up being positive? It's very hard. So I think there's a need for an overhauling, but the social, the Children and Gender Affairs Ministry is up on the task. Understanding each, the problem is part of solving them. And I think working in nexus and collaboration with Parliament will help a lot. And partners must come on board for us to get these kids out of the streets. Parents must understand that if you don't want a child, use contraceptives. Use family planning mechanisms. Because if not, that child will not only become a burden to you, the parents, but to society. Now you see, they are, not, they, this, they, are not, uh, they are no longer in their houses or their homes. They are on the streets. And 10 chances to one, they are wrecking havoc on innocent people on the streets. So we must all come together, the parliament, the executive, and also I think the judiciary, we should, we should give them credit on this one. I will not give them credit for their delayance in still coming to a conclusion in the case of the 10 appeal. I kindly crave the indulgence of the Chief Justice and the Judiciary to kindly settle this blight on our legislative democracy, removing 10 MPs indefinitely without any conclusion of that matter is not good for our democracy. Having what I would call a foreign seat in Parliament, Constituency 110, 
it's a blight. And that is on the table of the judiciary, but on the intervention on, on, on protecting girls and, and children, I think the judiciary has done its bit, and we must all work in concert to make sure that we address these issues. All right, um, we we'll barely have um, two minutes. Um, um, I'll add you in one minute. What, what would you say, um, or what's your perception so far on 20,000 kids living on the street, and what do we need to do um, um, as a nation to make sure that, if not reduce this number totally, but at least 20,000 is exorbitant. It, it, it's a huge amount of um, children out mm. on the streets in the whole country. Yes, that's also is another worrisome issue. The number is very alarming, 20,000. Uh, 20,000 children in the streets of Sierra Leone, not only in Freetown, across the country. I say, I believe it's a concern. But what does that show? It shows a lot of things, negative things. Firstly, we start with the parents. Okay, it shows that parents do not have the control over their children. There are many of many parents who just deliver these children and then abandon them without taking no parental care. That's another issue. We have seen in the past that we have so certain um, children they take care of for themselves. You understand? They rent houses, they pay their school fees, etc., etc. Whereas the parents don't care. Wake up in the morning go about his business and come back, I don't want to know anything, you understand? So this is a concern, which we believe as a nation, we must have to address this issue, because the home is the first place where we are going to train our children. If you know that you have a child, you must have to take that responsibility to take care of your child, especially his education, and also try to build religious aspect on them, you understand? But because of the parents are not care, they also are not responsible, these are the consequences. Now we're having 20,000 in the street, or free towns as well as other places around the, the country is a concern. So we must have to come together and try to make laws, okay, that we are going to see so that we're able to protect and guide our children. A lot of, also, a lot of acts has been taken for these children, but also what are the responsibility of some of these children? We just say, okay, the responsibility of these children, you have to do so, but what their own responsibility. That's also another issue because we have seen in the past that there are certain uh, um, child who do not want to take control for their to, from their parents. You understand? Always the law said that it's for the children, but what about themselves? Because parents also has that responsibility to take care of the child. So, but what is what, what does the law say for them? You understand? It's only for the child. That's another issue. So, I think as a nation, the Minister of um, Gender and Children's Affairs will also try to draw a press conference involving all other stakeholders, let us go back to the drawing board and see how best we are going to handle this situation before it go out of hand. All right, uh, uh, and thank you very much, um, Alaji Saido, and also to you, Melvin T. and Mansell, of course, they've been my guest. And before I close, um, I'll take a comment from Mohamed Jalo. He, um, he's saying, um, AYV, thank you very much for your good job as we are now viewing you guys live and clear in Bumbuna. Mm -hmm. um, with that, um, this is why I want to bring the court in stand. You'll be watching fr um, Front Page on AYV Television on Channel 33 and also online at www.ayvnews.com and um, on Facebook, Africa Young Voices Media Empire and for our listeners on Radio FM 101.6. I want to say many thanks to my producers, Mohamed Lamin Banya and Ransford McLean and also many thanks to Ronald um, Joe Morovia for um, joining um, the production team today and also to my cameraman um, Bakal. Many thanks um, to them and this is where I bring the curtains down. Uh, my name is Bokari Matia. Many thanks for watching and listening. <laughs>